all we are discussing today about a very important topic related to the brain and that is known as the meninges now meninges are also called as meninges or we can also call it as meningeal layers okay now these are the coverings which are found around the brain or the spinal cord and we know very well that the brain and the spinal cords are the parts of the central nervous system and these are the protective coverings okay but the number of the meninges are different in different organisms say for very first if we take a example of the fishes in the case of the fishes there is only one meninx means i can say that they are having only one meningeal layer around the brain and that is called as the meninx primitiva it is also called as a meninx primitiva okay so fishes have only one meningeal layer that second one is known as the amphibians reptiles and the aves okay amphibians reptiles and aves now they are having two meningeal layers around the brain the inner one is called as the pia arachnoid the inner one is called as the pia arachnoid and the outer one is called as the dura mater okay but if we talk about the mammals Uh, means uh, if we talk about the humans and all other mammals then the cns then the cns that is the central nervous system which is consisting of the brain and the spinal cord is covered by how many meninges it is covered by three meninges which are respectively called as from outside to inside called as the dura mater which is the outermost one the second one is known as the arachnoid which is known as the middle one and the third one that is the innermost and that innermost layer is called as a pia mater okay so we'll be having the discussion one by one the very first is known as the dura mater now you have to concentrate here this is the dura mater this layer this complete one this one this is called as what the dura mater now dura mater is outermost as it is outermost it is thicker okay it is thick it is fibrous fibrous means it is made up of collagen fibers this dura mater is made up of collagen fibers and it is very much strong so altogether we can say that in mammals the outermost layer is the dura mater which is thick which is made up of collagen fibers hence it is fibrous and it is very much strong and it lies along the inner side of the cranium of the skull and it lies on the inner side of the cranium of the skull why because what is present outside the brain now this is the brain say for if this is the brain and if the brain is surrounded by the meninges okay and we know very well that the brain surrounded by the meninges is found in the brain box and what is brain box that is known as the cranium and what where is the cranium present cranium is present in the skull so we can say in the skull cranium present cranium is known as the brain box in the cranium brain is present and surrounded uh, by the meninges or we can say that brain is surrounded by the meninges which are called as the dura mater arachnoid mater and the pia mater okay so it is lying along the inner side of the cranium of the skull or we can say that just outside dura mater just outside the dura mater what is present here so here cranium is present outside the dura mater cranium is present and you can see here that this dura mater is made up of two layers a uh, individual dura mater is made up of how many layers two layers one is known as the endosteel the outer layer the outer layer is called as the endosteel and the inner layer and the inner layer is called as a meningeal layer okay so we can say that the dura mater is actually surrounded by two layers endosteel and meningeal layer the outer layer is known as the endosteel layer and the inner one is known as the meningeal layer and both are attached to each other we are not having so much of the gap between them but what happens at few places at few places there is a space found there is a space found between the endosteel layer and the meningeal layer you can see here that at this place the endosteel layer and the meningeal layer have separated and they have formed a cranial venous sinus they have formed a cranial venous sinus 
which is filled with the venous fluid. That's why I have written that at some places the dura mater forms cranial venous sinus. What it forms? Cranial venous sinus which contains the venous blood. I will be discussing more about this cranial venous sinus in my next videos which will be based on the CSF and the CSF circulation. At that time I will be discussing the role of the cranial venous sinus. Okay. Now this was all about the dura mater. Now next layer, the second layer, this one, this one right is called as what the arachnoid this is called as the arachnoid now arachnoid is a middle layer we know very well because it is found between the dura mater and the pia mater it is found in between that's why it is called as the middle layer and this middle layer is thin it is thin it is flexible and it is delicate now see the dura mater was outside and it was strong it is very much delicate it is flexible layer it is thin layer but you must remember this thing that this is the feature purely of the mammals only means arachnoid purely arachnoid matter is found in the mammals only no other creatures are having the arachnoid okay now at several places it forms villi like foldings if you will see the arachnoid then you will be able to see that in arachnoid you can see at the center that arachnoid at few places forms villi like foldings now villi you have seen uh, in digestive system also in the intestine villi are present and they are having the role of absorption like that type of the villi like that type of the villi are present here also and these villi are called as the arachnoid villi the role of the arachnoid villi is to absorb the csf from the subarachnoid space and pour it into the cranial venous sinus we know very well that in subarachnoid space CSF is filled. CSF means cerebrospinal fluid. So the cerebrospinal fluid from the subarachnoid space is taken up by the arachnoid villi and it is poured in the cranial venous sinus. Okay, so they have these arachnoid villi. Now, one thing to be noted here is that the space present between. Now see here, there is a space present between the dura mater and the arachnoid layer so the space present between the dura mater and the arachnoid meningeal layer is called as the subdural space is called as the subdural space and this subdural space is filled with a serous fluid it is not a csf normally the csf is found in the subarachnoid space it is actually filled with a serous fluid okay so this was about the arachnoid layer now coming to the next layer which is the innermost layer and that is known as the pia mater that is known as the pia mater now see a pia mater is the innermost layer it is very much thin it is very much transparent membrane right it is highly vascular also means it is having a rich supply of blood so we can say it is a thin layer it is a transparent layer it is the innermost membrane right and it is highly vascular and it is firmly attached to the brain why because we are studying meninges and meninges are the coverings around the brain or the spinal cord so innermost layer which is attached to the brain okay is actually nothing it is the pia mater okay and one thing remember that these type of the meninges are not only found around the brain these type of the meninges are also found around the spinal cord because we know very well that meningeal layers are found around the CNS okay and CNS consists of the brain as well as the spinal cord okay now see here at some places it merges deeply you can see these structures you can see these structures at some places it merges deeply into the sulci of the brain into the sulci what are sulci sulci are the depressions sulci are the depressions of the brain to form the telacoroidea at some places it merges deeply into the sulci of the brain to form telacoroidea so these are what telacoroidea so they merges with the with the sulci of the brain and these telocoroidea will later form choroid plexuses in the brain which secretes the csf in the later videos also i will be talking about the choroid plexus choroid plexus are actually found in the brain and they are of two types one is known as the anterior choroid plexus 
another is known as the posterior choroid plexus okay and posterior choroid plexus is associated with the medulla oblongata part of the brain and the anterior choroid plexus is associated with the roof of the diencephalon that is known as the epithalamus okay and these choroid plexuses will later on secretes or synthesize the csf what is csf cerebrospinal fluid and that cerebrospinal fluid is found in the subarachnoid space now the question arises that where is subarachnoid space so the space between the arachnoid the space between the arachnoid and the pia mater and the pia mater this space is called as the subarachnoid space and this space is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid and what is cerebrospinal fluid what is its composition how does it circulate through the various ventricles of the brain and the spinal cord that we'll be discussing in the next video so you can uh, just wait for that video okay and at the last you must know that what is meningitis what is meningitis now meningitis is an infection which is generally caused by a bacteria that is called as the Neisseria meningitidis okay again I am talking about the uh, Neisseria meningitidis what is Neisseria meningitidis Neisseria meningitidis is a bacteria which is actually causing meningitis in which what happens swelling occurs in the meningeal layers so swelling in the meningeal layers due to bacterial infection is called as meningitis okay so dear student this video was based on the meningeal layer it is very important many times the question can be asked in the examinations so thanks a lot for watching me if you want to take the screenshot of this video you can take